Welcome to CCSD Earth Science. Today we're going to be talking about the life of a star and classification of a star. Stars basically start out in a nebula, which is a cloud of gas and debris, and it's where the star forms. And over time, that gas and debris starts to contract or come together, and it forms a little bit of energy. That energy in the core uh, it actually begins to start nuclear fusion where you've got hydrogen that starts converting into helium and that stage right there is what creates the main sequence star so this is kind of where it starts out this is the first the beginnings of the star and then you end up into the main sequence stage the main sequence stage is where the star spends most of its life and uh, as you can see, it says right here, it's about 90% of its life is during a main sequence phase. Our sun is a main sequence star, and 10 billion years is the average time frame that a star is a main sequence star. Our sun is somewhere in the middle of that, so we're about halfway through the life of the sun. In the core, hydrogen is being used for the uh, nuclear fusion, but it's starting to get depleted and it's um, going to start to eventually run out and that's where you end up going into the giant stage. During this time the star expands tremendously. Our Sun will get to be um, close to a hundred times the size that it is now so it's a big star right now but it will be even bigger in the future. And we think of our Sun as being big but compared to other stars in the universe it's actually kind of an average size star. There are stars that are much larger and stars that start out much larger in the main sequence stage get even bigger during the giant stage and that's where you end up with stars that can be close to a thousand times what they started out as. Um, also during this time because you're running out of that energy, the hydrogen, um, you end up having helium that's left over and the helium starts converting into the carbon and that's part of why it's getting so much larger but it also is cooling down the star as well giving it a reddish color and we'll talk more about colors and stars in a minute but the redder stars are actually a little bit cooler or a lot cooler actually than, um, than the blue stars that we see. After the star starts to expand and it's in that giant stage, it really is using up all of its fuel and basically it dies. It's this where you end up with the death of the star. Um, it runs out of fuel and then ends up collapsing on itself. And depending on what it started out as or how big it was will determine what happens during its death. Low mass stars. They don't even make it into the red giant or giant phase because they didn't have that much matter to start with. So they don't, um, they just pretty much collapse right after the main sequence stage and you end up with a white dwarf. So it's a very small, dense star. Medium stars like our sun, they also collapse on themselves after they use up all of their fuel. But because there was more to start with, that collapse creates a little bit of an explosion and you end up with a gas cloud that forms around that white dwarf and we call that a planetary nebula. And there's a lot of pictures of planetary nebulas that you can see online um, and a lot of them are really pretty cool looking. So if you get a chance, check that out. Now the exciting stars are the massive stars, the huge ones that were really big to begin with. When they die, because there was so much to start with, when it collapses, it creates a huge, massive explosion, and we call that a supernova. When a star, a star like our sun explodes or collapses on itself, we call that a nova. But when you have so much more material there, you get a supernova. And the remnants of that can be in two different forms. You can have a neutron star, which is something that's even more dense than a white dwarf and it's also going to be extremely small because there's so much stuff to start with that that collapse was much more extreme. And a black hole is just one step further beyond that. The remnants are so dense and gravity is so strong around that material that light that comes near it can't even escape. It just gets pulled right in and it's, it's gone. We can't see anything around it. Um, 
So that is a uh, what happens when you have the really large stars. You end up with a supernova. And like I said, our sun will not ever, that's not ever going to happen with our sun because it wasn't big enough to start with. Now, we talked about the different stages there, but we can actually take the stars that we see in the sky and we can classify them and group them. And this was done by a couple of astronomers, Hertzsprung and Russell. They developed the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or we'll probably just call it the HR diagram in class. And this is on page 15 in your reference table. And make sure you have your reference table with you in class because we're going to be coloring uh, the different shades of color of the stars. So bring that with you. But the HR diagram is set up looking at the temperature and the magnitude of the star. Magnitude meaning how bright it is. So if we can compare those two things and it creates this uh, diagram or graph. One other thing we talk, mentioned about this a minute ago is that the stars that are actually the hottest are blue stars and the red stars are the ones that are a little bit cooler. So when you look up in the sky you can actually get an idea of the um, relative temperature of all of the stars. So the blue and white ones are much hotter than the red and orange stars that you see in the sky. Um, like I said, we're going to spend some more time looking at this diagram that you have in your reference table. There's a lot of other things included on there, um, and we'll go through that together. So again, make sure you have your reference table with you.